Hello, hello! Welcome to another installment of New Gameplay Today. I am your host, Wesley, and today I am joined by Kyle once more. How you doing? Hey, man. I'm I'm here a lot lately, I feel like. Yeah, it's great. I've seen the uh, the comment section has been really stoked to see you back, so um, it's fun getting you on. Well, I, I like being here. What, what What is this weird thing you're showing me? What is this? So this is a, a, a small, very cool indie game called Outer Terror, and um, it kind of just popped up on my radar through, you know, a good old-fashioned press release. Um, <laughs> the publisher of uh, Vox Pop Games, who I've done a few things with, they have a really cool, like, publishing arm. Um, I did a story on them last year. They have uh, they did a game called Weapon Ear, developed by a single 17-year-old kid, and um, you can play with one hand. Very cool. You can go read about it on Game Informer. But this is another game they brought my way. They um, they know my tastes well. It's called Outer Terror, and it's um, by developer Salt and Pixel, and it is kind of like a like a, almost a, like cultish uh, roguelite pulp action horror type thing. It's got a bunch of different things going on. Um, so like when you start the game, the art is amazing. Very like 80s, 90s pulp horror comedy type stuff. And you pick like your prototypical hero type character. And then you ju then you jump into like one of the comics. This one's kind of like, a, you know, the dead from beyond is kind of the story. There's also like a one that looks like very Cthulhu and then zombies and you know, your typical the horror tropes like that um and yeah and so what you're doing in the game is you don't control the shooting like you can you can manually do it but your character shoots on its own and you're just kind of going through an onslaught of enemies learning their patterns how they follow you where they pop up and picking up various items and buffs and all kind of stuff along the way and it's a roguelite. Well, I don't even say roguelite. When you die, like your progress is completely reset. You don't keep anything. Is so, there, does anything come forward? No, nothing. Uh, and well, okay. I'm, I should mention this is just a demo. So maybe in the final game, there's more progression in that regard. But right now, you can hold up to eight items, and they do not like you don't transfer progress or anything like that in this demo. Like when you die, you die. Yeah, this is this seems very. Uh... I mean, I'm getting a lot of Vampire Survivors energy from this, especially if you're yes, like yeah. not uh, controlling the the guns. You know, it's just about movement, and then you it's about movement and choices uh, about where you want to take upgrades, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I haven't played Vampire Survivors, but I've watched a lot of it and read a lot of it. It's mostly because I know if I start playing it, I'm not going to do too well here at the end of this year in terms of work. So <laughs> holding it off for the holiday break. But yeah, yeah, that is like the vibe I'm getting, which is weird because this is something I covered this like a, a month or two months ago. I don't know. Like it's not made because of Vampire Survivor. This sure. clearly existed before. So it is funny to see something like that pop up. Yeah, well, I mean, Vampire Survivor's been out for a while, to be fair. Like, it just only That's went true. into 1.0. But, I mean, I you know, I, it's... The similar ideas pop up at the same time. I'm not... <laughs> there's no... It's not reasonable to be like, well, obviously this is inspired by Vampire Survivors. Who knows? But, like, that, I think Vampire Survivors is going to kick off, kick off a wave of games like this. Yeah, uh, for sure. Where it's, like, a little more passive, but, like, really rewarding. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm for it. I really like Vampire Survivors a lot. I I'm up for more stuff like that, for sure. Yeah, this one's especially cool. I mean, I haven't played Vampire Survivors. Vampires are cool, but I really like the vibes of this one. Kind of like yeah, the it's interesting. horror yeah. comics and then very, you know, they're going for a certain style visually. Um, so what, what, what I'm doing here is I've made it to kind of like the safe haven of this area. And you can pick up quests and talk to people. Um, you're going to see here that I'm going to pick up a quest. And they're simple. You just... This dude's like, hey, can you help me find my pet rabbit or bunny? And then you follow him and we'll see that play out. Um, but yeah, kind of like you mentioned, it's all very like passive. It's you can control where you fire with like the right stick, but that's if you need like a precision hit um, against a boss, maybe like if you're specifically trying to take down someone. But otherwise, yeah. it is very much um, OK. Where's this next item on the map? Let me go pick that up. OK, do I want a machete that gives me like a close range melee hit? Do I want to just buff my damage real quick? Do I want a health pack? Do I want uh, like a ballistic vest that makes my defense better? Um, and you're kind of just building these builds on the fly, which is a lot of fun for me because, um, which is, this is what the genre is great for, is every run's like extremely different. You have no idea 
what kind of character you're going to build each time. Yeah. Is do you know if the levels consistent, or is that kind of mix it up? The sort of layout mix up too. The layout is consistent, like that. Um, uh, like safe haven town thing is always at that area in the map. But yeah, this is a, a demo build, so yeah, I, I don't have any change. indication it's exactly yeah. I don't have any indication it's different in the final version, but there are like other maps and other comics to jump into and play through. So um, look, are you doing like a little dash there too? Yeah, so you can hit the left trigger to dash, which is like I wasn't using it at the beginning, and you could kind of see my butt get kicked a bit. Um, but it's essential uh, when you have you know these hordes of zombies and undead and corpses coming after you um you kind of have to look for those openings because you'll get surrounded Surround. often yeah and you gotta just shoot right through them so are you so it's a most left control stick and left trigger and then you can use the right trigger or the right control stick if you want but you're not really generally you're not really using it right no you'll see me use it here in a bit but um yeah the right stick is just kind of like a precision shot otherwise uh, it kind of—I think they just kind of shoot at the closest enemy necessarily. Um, like I don't know, it's kind of random. You can't control where he automatically shoots, but it does a pretty good job of shooting the the closest threat. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, oh. there's a lot of threats, so it's what do you got not there always now? super perfect. I, tons of zombies. What's that weird? Thing. Yeah, those are, I think, the, I think that's the From the Beyond section of this map. Uh, oh. No idea, but they uh, take a lot more hits. And we're coming up on a boss, I believe. Yeah, this guy's looking for his bunny. Um, spoilers, his bunny's uh, not doing so great, which we will see here. Yeah, there it is. That's his bunny. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so you can we'd have a, a happy ending. Yeah, right. Um, I threw a bomb, it's, it kind of happens quickly, but your right trigger um, is a uh, special thing you have. It's like a regenerating uh, item. In this instance, it's a basically a grenade. Mm. Uh, super helpful. Uh, yeah, let me just, the bottom left, you can see it recharging. And then to the right of that is a, uh, it's like an electric repel grenade I have. You use the bumpers to throw those. So some okay. items you pick up and they're like one-time uses, med kits, uh, repel items, stuff like that. Others are buffs, and you can see my current lineup of buffs at the top. Um, and I'm picking up, I believe, the shotgun. Yeah. So or no, I think I picked up a health kit. But so can you, can, get, can you get different weapons, or you just upgrade your one weapon, or? Yeah, you can get different weapons. So you start off with a pistol that shoots slow. You can upgrade it to fire faster, and you can upgrade every weapon you have to go faster. You can upgrade their damage as well. So far, I found like a um, SMG that shoots uh, like three bullets at a time, kind of like a da da da. And then I've been primarily using the shotgun because, as you can see, it has a three shot spread, which is yeah, great for good. taking on these hordes. There's other things too. There's a flamethrower, and the flamethrower automatically fires when enemies get close, so you don't have to worry about that. There's like tentacles uh, uh, that you can just like, they just come out of the ground randomly trying to see yeah that little minion dude looks like a little naked person that's one of my power-ups as well it just distracts enemies for me and again most of this is automatic like yeah that little yellow reticle is me targeting with the right stick and that's just because i'm specifically making sure i hit this boss but almost everything else is happening um automatically is that how it is in vampire survivors you're just picking up and kind of yeah letting you, it play out and all your sort of attacks are um, they're they're not focused like that. Like they're like uh, you know 360 degree attacks and stuff like that. They're more oh, like okay. they're all like area of effect. So really, I mean not not to get too hung up on like Vampire Survivor compar comparisons. Like all you're literally all you're doing in Vampire Survivors is moving the left control stick. Um, okay. That's it. Uh, Interesting. And it's really really satisfying for that reason. Well, great. I'm sure Salt and Pixel is not going to be upset about being compared to. Uh, a darling of this year's games. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, it's a great game. So, yeah, and so just like if you're watching this and you're like, oh, I want to check it out. Unfortunately, I don't really have a release date or a release window. I'm told it's coming soon, but I don't know if that's 2022 soon or 2023 soon. Um, it's going to be PC only. Uh, you can get it on Steam or Vox Pop Games. Uh, oh, and you're and playing with a controller, right? I mean, obviously, you've been using yes, terms yeah, like yeah, bumper yeah. and that kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, um, it actually recommends a controller, which makes sense yeah, given, it. yeah, it's, it's just like, movement. It's like, it looks like a twin stick shooter, but it, it's not really a twin stick shooter, right? <laughs> kind of like one yeah. of those situations. 
You could play it like a twin stick shooter, but I think that's kind of defeating the purpose of, you know, focusing on your build rather than it's not it's not a high score game. So right. like it's just about surviving. So you don't need to like I don't know, put a lot of focus into shooting everything on screen. Although I am doing that right now, I think. Um, but yeah, one thing I'm excited about, which I did not get to try out, is that it has two player co-op, which is cool. That's I'm excited cool. to see how that works. Um, you know, are we advancing together? Is it like one person in my world just kind of tagging along? Not sure. I don't have any details on that, but um, there are 10 survivors to choose from. Uh, I only had two available to me. Uh, and you, I assume, can take all 10 of them through the, uh, let me see how many different, there's going to be five volumes, uh, which are like the stories in the final game. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to, I think it's going to release with like a good chunk of content, um, which I'm excited about. And I found it's like, I don't know, maybe Vampire Survivors and other games are like this, but it's one of those games where I have 10 minutes to spare, you know, maybe I'm waiting for a story to publish or something. And I'm like, oh, let me just do a run real quick and see what I can do. Sure. Uh, which I think is a, you know, great thing for a game like this. That's kind of, I don't think people are necessarily playing these games for hours and hours, although I could see myself doing that. But the... <laughs> The quick run is ideal for me, so I'm yeah, having a really yeah. good time in that regard. That's cool. Yeah, it looks interesting. Yeah, and so I think that's going to wrap up our time with Outer Terror. Again, it's coming to PC uh, sometime soon. Wish I could tell you when. I'm excited to find out the release date. Um, it's one that I'm going to keep on my radar, and if you're interested, you should too. Thanks so much for joining me, Kyle. You're welcome. Bye, everybody. <laughs>